Hello and welcome to our special show on the Prime Minister's state visit to the United States. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Prime Minister Modi's landmark state visit to the U.S. has raised expectations on multiple deliverables, with defence collaboration really standing out. First up, India is set to buy Predator drones developed by General Atomics in a government-to-government -government deal with the United States. General Electric will manufacture fighter jets, fighter jet engine technology in India in collaboration with Hindustan Aeronautics. Both nations are also expected to increase collaboration in the field of artificial intelligence, 5G, 6G, Open RAN, quantum computing and much more. Let's also not forget semiconductors. There's a big deal on semiconductors that will be announced during this visit with Micron uh, looking at an investment of $2.7 billion. Joining me now to take the discussion forward also to talk about the implications of prime minister's visit especially for the defense sector is baba kalyani chairman and managing director of bharat forge also a member of the india us ceo forum uh, mr kalyani thank you very much for joining us let me uh, begin by asking you about the opportunity that you see when it comes to the indian defense industry do you think this visit really will usher in a new era a new market a new supply chain for the Indian defense industry and an opportunity to closely align with the U.S.? You know, I think uh, this historic visit of our Honorable Prime Minister to the United States, uh, uh, the state visit uh, by the invitation of President Biden and the pre discussion that were held in India during the CEO forum in March, during uh, the ISET meeting that happened uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I think this has completely opened up a new orbit uh, for India, Indian business, Indian industry uh, with the United States. It's, it's, it's an amazingly different landmark that we are going to achieve uh, with what is going to be discussed from whatever I read in the newspaper and media. On the defense uh, side, uh, uh, the two examples that you stated, uh, uh, the manufacturing of uh, uh, GE's 414 jet engines for our fighter jets by HAL, and of course the, the drone, the high altitude, uh, long endurance drones uh, uh, manufactured by General Atomics uh, to be made in India. That itself will open up uh, huge new technology areas which were kind of close to India for a long period of time. And I think this will, uh, with the whole Atmanirbhar process that uh, Honorable Prime Minister has unleashed in India uh, will create fantastic opportunities for India's industry. Right. Uh, just to speak uh, specifically about the jet engine technology transfer, we're learning that uh, we could be looking at 80% technology transfer by value from GE to HAL over a three-year period. Give us a sense of how the Indian defense industry, the Indian uh, ecosystem will benefit from a deal of this kind. Will Bharat Forge also stand to benefit as a supplier to, of uh, components to uh, the GHAL deal? Yeah, I think all of us will benefit. You know, when you're talking about jet engines for fighter jets, uh, normally there is something like 300, 350 different technologies that are used in making jet engines. Uh, important among them is uh, single crystal blades, uh, manufacture of that, a lot of uh, high technology forgings that are required in a jet engine. Uh, we hope to be a part of that, hopefully, and n number of other technologies. So I think there is going to be a large uh, uh, space for industry, both uh, the small sector, the medium sector, the large sector, to participate in this program because one company alone can't do everything by itself. So I think there'll be a huge, uh, uh, huge opportunity and a huge horizontal deployment of these technologies as these technologies come into India through this uh, transfer of uh, jet engine technology to HAM. Right. Uh, and what about uh, the Predator drones? The acquisition of 31 Predator drones, this will also happen in phases. How does the Indian defense industry uh, and companies like Bharat Forge uh, stand to benefit? Well, you know, we already work with uh, General Atomics on some other things. Uh, so hopefully as uh, 
these drones get uh, produced in India, or at least some part of it gets produced in India. Uh, we hope to participate in that. Again, uh, this is also a technology that uh, is not available today completely in India. And I think uh, it will also give uh, a, a lot of, uh, let's say, inputs to Indian industry who are involved in this area, composites, uh, uh, how to make uh, drones that fly at high altitude. We're talking about like 40, 45,000 feet flying for 40, 50 hours at a time. Uh, with all the payloads that it, it has. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a whole sort of complex technologies that are going to be used there. And I think India is going to have access to them. Mm. It's a great thing that's going to happen. Mm. Right. Uh, majority of our defense equipment, uh, Mr. Kalyani, has been traditionally Russian developed and Russian provided. Uh, we, we still have very strong linkages with the Russian defense industry. We've seen it with the S-400 defense system, the Sukhoi and uh, AK-47s. Uh, and we will see that relationship continuing to grow. But do you also feel that with this visit of the Prime Minister to the US and the roadmap that we are agreeing on, on defense industrial cooperation, cooperation in critical emerging technologies, there is going to be a pivot towards the United States uh, when it comes to industry-to-industry -industry cooperation, will it happen at the cost of our cooperation with Russia or will the two relationships function independently? I think, to, uh, I think you know, as far as industry is concerned, and I, I'll talk more about the private sector in India, I think this is a great opportunity for the private sector in India to get involved with the supply chain uh, of the U.S. defense industry. Uh, build relationships with the U.S. defense industry in producing products in India. And I think this is something that we have not been able to do uh, till now. And this kind of opens up this avenue. And this is a huge opportunity. I mean, the U.S. defense industry is more than $800 billion by itself. So this, this opens up a huge opportunity. In the case of our, uh, let's say, uh, arrangements with Russia, it has largely been a one-way uh, relationship. That means they're supplying equipments to you and uh, to the Indian government and to Indian public sector units. I have not seen many uh, examples of uh, uh, Russian defense companies participating with Indian private sector in producing products. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to say much about it. But with the United States, it's going to be a very, very different relationship. Uh, we had in our CEO's forum when uh, Secretary Raimondo was here, the Commerce Secretary of the United States in March, a lot of discussion on this in this area of defense and defense collaboration. And how do you get Indian companies involved in the supply chain uh, of uh, U.S. defense companies? How do we work together in co-developing products, both for India as well as the United States? How do we engage with each other in in uh, finding sources of strategic uh, uh, materials. India had a vast uh, uh, ore in terms of titanium, zirconium, a lot of strategic materials, but we've not been able to convert that into products. And I think with this uh, process that is going on and hopefully the discussion that will take place uh, in Washington between Honorable Prime Minister Modi and the President Biden, uh, these things will be on the table. And this was on the table when uh, the right. two national security advisors had a meeting a few weeks ago in New Delhi uh, in the ISET format. Uh, mm -hmm. We had attended this meeting and a lot of discussions took place in this area. So I see, I, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic that we will see some good results coming out of these discussions. Right. I would also like to ask you, uh, because the Indian ambassador to U.S., Taranjit Sandhu, said that with this meeting, India is and the Indian defense industry is going to get integrated into the global defense manufacturing supply chain. Absolutely. I would like to ask you, because of the takeaways, because of the takeaways from this visit, are you looking at collaborations in certain defense sectors with U.S. companies, uh, Mr. Kalyani? And how much are you likely 
to invest in scaling up your defense production and maybe investing in new avenues uh, of technology in the defense sector? But we are already investing in the defense sector in certain areas, uh, uh, like artillery guns, small arms, uh, in drones, uh, in UAVs. But I think uh, this whole uh, uh, supply chain relationship that Indian industry can build with the U.S. defense industry opens up a lot of new opportunities in areas like electronics, in areas like uh, component manufacturing, in areas like subsystem manufacturing. And uh, yeah, we are working with some companies in the U.S. in this area. I don't want to name the companies because uh, it's not right. But yeah, this is going to increase the opportunities for companies like us who are already engaged in this. Secondly, the government of India, the Honorable Prime Minister himself has put a target for, a, for Indian defense industry for exports. Uh, that first target is to achieve $5 billion of exports by 2025. So I think all this kind of gels together in terms of what's going on. Right. Uh, Mr. Kalani, I would also like to ask you, as a member of the Indo-US CEOs Forum, uh, has there been any kind of recommendation in terms of removing the regulatory hurdles when it comes to the ambition for uh, the partnership between the two countries? Do you think we still need to scale up the ambition? Uh, do you miss uh, not having an FTA? Uh, and do you miss the fact that the FTA is no longer on the table? Well, you know, it will be a great thing if you have an FTA, sure. And I think work is going on in that area. There, I know there have been discussions between our uh, Commerce Minister and the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Uh, we had some discussions in March during her visit here. But uh, there are other regulations that uh, uh, we have given in terms of recommendations for removal. That is, uh, you know, India is currently not part of the key U.S. agreements that is security of supply arrangements, defense federal acquisition regulation supply, uh, supplement. And that would be helpful if India becomes part of this and, you know, these regulatory hurdles are removed because then Indian industry would have uh, free access to work with the U.S. defense industry as part of their supply chain. So I think these are, these are some of the important things that need to be done. Right. Uh, and as far as the trade partnership go, any market access issues that you uh, see with the United States, uh, Mr. Kalyani? No, I think, you know, uh, in the U.S., market access has not been an issue. I mean, all of us, uh, we have great relationships with companies in the United States. We export a lot of products. Uh, India gets a lot of products from the U.S. Uh, into India. And I think we are, uh, we are beginning to see... Uh, much, let's say, bigger ambition in terms of what we want to achieve in terms of trade. We, clearly, there is an ambition to increase uh, the trade between the U.S. and India. And, uh, uh, you know, the whole Indo-Pacific Economic Framework Agreement, which India is committed to, is going to help in uh, making all these things happen. Right. Uh, anything we should watch out for in IPEF, sir? Any concern that you have on IPEF, especially on the trade pillar? No, I don't have any concerns. I think, uh, you know, there is a recognition in, in the world, and especially in the United States, uh, about uh, India's importance in this uh, uh, geopolitical uh, world that we live in with all the problems that we have in so many places. And I think... Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister has been able to build an amazing relationship uh, uh, in the United States with their leadership. Uh, it's been a work that's been going on for the last uh, uh, two, three years. And I think what you are seeing now is a culmination of all the efforts that have been put in uh, right from the National Security Advisor, our Foreign Minister, our Commerce Minister, uh, uh, from the business side, between India and U.S. CEO forums. And, uh, you know, we are all talking the same language after a long time. You know, everybody is saying we need to have resilient supply chains and India needs to be part of this whole resilient supply chains, whether it's defense, whether it's other areas. 
So I think I think this, there is a great recognition for India as a country, and I think we have to give credit to the Honorable Prime Minister that he has really raised India's position on the on the world table. Okay. We've uh, run out of time, but thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, Mr. Kalyani, giving us your sense of uh, what this visit will mean for Indo-defense ties, industry to industry ties in the defense sector going forward. Thanks once again for being with us here on CNBC. We're heading into a short break. Don't go anywhere. Prime Minister Modi meets top CEOs, academicians, thought leaders on day one of his first visit to America. Details when we are back also on the big semiconductor deal. Don't go anywhere.